Hello everyone, I am Sampurna Roy, a student of class 8, studying at Greater Valley School. Today, I am going to present an overview on microorganisms. To start with, let me give a brief introduction. Living species which can only be observed under a microscope are called microorganisms. A wide range of microorganisms exist on this planet, which includes bacteria, protozoa, algae, and fungi. Here is an example of bacterial cells, which can be seen under a microscope. Any object smaller than 100 micrometer is visible only under a microscope. Hence, an optical or an electron microscope is required to study the microorganisms. It's worth mentioning that by classical definitions, viruses do not belong to the family of microorganisms. The reasons behind this are first, Viruses are irresponsive, that is, they do not respond to environmental changes. Second, they do not reproduce or replicate themselves outside the host cell. The above are important characteristics of living organisms. Thus, viruses can be termed as a link between living and non-living organisms. Anthony van Leeuwenhoek was the first microbiologist in the world who designed and developed a microscope of his own to study the microorganisms. It is interesting to see how a 17th century microscope would look like. In absence of a camera back in the late 1600s, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek drew the tiny objects which he had observed under his microscope. A variety of microorganisms exist in nature as well as within our body. They include bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and algae. A representative image of each microorganism is shown here. They do not only vary in size, but also in structure, habitat, metabolism, and so on. Let us have a close look at the size variations among different microorganisms. On a comparative scale, Bacterial cells are, for example, one-tenth to one-fifth in size of that of a human red blood cell. Here, the relative size of microorganisms is presented on a log scale. Only for the comparison purpose, the size of DNA and viruses is included, though they don't belong to microorganisms. Let's have a few snapshots of the microorganisms abundant within our body and in our surroundings. Interestingly, our colon contains the highest microbial density on Earth. Bacteria like Lactobacillus, Clostridium, and many other species dwell in our gastrointestinal tract. These are called human gut bacteria. These friendly bacteria help in the digestion of food. Then we move on to leguminous plants. Their root nodules contain nitrogen fixing bacteria called rhizobium. It helps to fix nitrogen in soil which is later utilized by plants for the nutrition. When it comes to fungi or specifically mold, it can be seen everywhere. 
For example, if a piece of bread is kept outside for several days, we may observe that it develops grayish green patches on it. These patches are a kind of fungi known as red mold. Parasitic protosome Plasmodium falciparum is unicellular and causes malaria in humans, transmitted through the bite of a female anaphylis mosquito. Microalgae are unicellular microorganisms living in saline or freshwater environment and capable of doing photosynthesis. One of them is the unicellular flagellate called Chlamydomonas. In the context of microorganisms, let's mention coronavirus, which by copybook definition is not a microorganism. However, recent global outbreak inevitably draws our attention to this tiny pathogen now prevailing in our close proximity. We shall now discuss the microorganisms which are useful to us. Let us start with the dairy industry, which contributes to more than 100,000 crore rupees to the national economy. Yogurt and cheese are integral parts of the dairy industry. Streptococcus thermophilus bacteria is a universal starter for yogurt fermentation. It turns lactose into lactic acid. It can improve the texture and flavor properties of the dairy products. Next, we move on to the bakery industry which is one of the largest segments of food processing in India. For baking bread and bakery products, in particular for raising bread, yeast is used, which ferments the sugar and develops the dough. Three types of bacteria are used to treat wastewater entering the treatment plant aerobic, anaerobic, and facultative. Longerinia arcobacter are examples of anaerobic bacteria that is used in wastewater treatment for methane fermentation of sewage sludge. Although chemical pesticides are more prevalent, however, they have adverse effect on human health. Bt is a microbe naturally found in soil. It makes proteins that are toxic to insect larvae like beetles, mosquitoes, caterpillars, and moths. American Environmental Protection Agency has been encouraging use of natural pesticides like Bt since 1961. Soil nutrition is another important domain where microorganisms like soy protozoa act as great friends by promoting nutrient cycling through intensive feeding on bacteria and releasing nitrogen. Microorganisms have widespread application in pharmaceutical industries which include enzymes, antibiotics, vaccines, and probiotics. For example, collagenase enzyme is derived from Clostridium histolyticum. This enzyme is used to treat a disease in which the fingers bend towards the palm but cannot be straightened. A range of pathogenic conditions are treated with antibiotics produced from bacteria and fungi. For example, streptomycin, tetracycline, erythromycin, etc. 
the first antibiotic penicillin, which was discovered by British scientist Alexander Fleming in 1928, is derived from Penicillium fungi. Clostridium tetani enters human body through open wounds and produces a toxin which causes tetanus. Interestingly, the tetanus toxide vaccine itself is a solution of formal dehyde deactivated toxin isolated from the same bacteria. Probiotics are live bacteria and yeasts that are good for human body, especially the digestive system. Probiotics are often good bacteria that keeps our gut healthy. Examples of probiotic bacteria include Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium, which are able to synthesize vitamin K and most of the water-soluble B vitamins such as cobalamin, folate, thiamine, etc. in human body. There are several microorganisms, of course, which are pathogenic in nature, that is, disease-causing. Let's talk about pathogenic bacteria. There are fewer than 100 species of pathogenic bacteria, which cause diseases in human beings. They can spread through water, air, soil, and through physical contact. Bacteria can be mainly classified into four types on the basis of their shape. Cocci, spherical or oval shaped. Bacillus, rod shaped. Vibrio, comma shaped. And spirilla, helical shaped. Vibrio cholerae, a comma shaped bacterium is a pathogen usually carried by water and food. This bacteria easily attached to chitin-containing shells of crabs, shrimps, and other shellfish. This bacteria causes cholera upon entering into human body. First discovered in 1882, Mycobacterium tuberculosis is a rod-shaped bacteria that causes a serious respiratory disease called tuberculosis. More than 2 lakh people in India die every year due to tuberculosis. The bacteria spreads through air droplets from infected people through coughing, sneezing, and speaking. Staphylococcus aureus a spherical shaped bacterium is a member of microbiota of the body. Staphylococcus is usually found in the upper respiratory tract on the, and on the skin. S. aureus can cause a range of illnesses ranging from minor skin infection like pimple and boils to life threatening diseases such as pneumonia, meningitis, and sepsis. While some fungi can be eaten safely or which are used in the production of antibiotics, others are poisonous. Among infectious fungi, Histoplasma capsulatum is an example, which causes flu-like illness and lung disease. Histoplasmosis is the most prevalent fungal infection in Northern America. Aspergillus flavus is another pathogenic fungus, best known for its colonization of cereal grains, legumes, and tree nuts. This fungal pathogen causes aspergillus ear and kernel rot. Inhalation of fungal pores of Aspergillus fumigators can cause life-threatening pulmonary or sinus diseases. 
pathogenic protozoa comprise a large number of eukaryotic microorganisms that cause serious parasitic disease such as malaria, toxoplasmosis, amoebiasis, giardiasis, and so on. Giardia lamblia causes a diarrheal illness known as giardiasis, which spreads through contaminated food or water or person-to-person -person contact. Plasmodium falciparum, the unicellular protozoan parasite, causes malaria in humans. The parasite is transmitted through bites of the female Anopheles mosquito. There are about 430 species of Anopheles mosquito, but only 30 to 40 species are actual vectors of malaria. Pathogenic microorganisms not only infect human beings, they cause series of diseases to crops and produce. Pusenia is a genre of plant pathogen, also known as rust. Stem rust has been devastating to wheat through many decades of production, especially during the 1950s in the United States. Xanthomonas axonopodis is a rod-shaped bacterium that causes citrus canker. This pathogen generally causes leaf spotting and fruit wind blemishing disease. The information shared through this presentation has been collected from these sources, which primarily include academic or government organizations. I hope that I could provide an overview of the microorganisms within our body and surroundings with a highlight on their usefulness and pathogenicity. Thank you for your precious time. Stay tuned with the upcoming presentation with a more focused topic on microorganisms.